University of Utah just turned 169 years old a couple days ago. Being that it started in the middle of winter, it was good that its first gift was a load of wood following Brigham Young's donation of $20. Years ago, U of U professor Craig Worth interviewed notable graduates, including the late president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Gordon B. Hinckley. Craig's birthday card to the U is worth watching this morning. The charter was signed just over 169 years ago, February 28th, 1850. And the fancy document hereby created the University of Utah, which meant it was time for a fundraiser. Brigham Young gave $20 and a Mr. Cole gave a load of wood. And that's all you needed to get a university going. A university that was first called the University of the State of Deseret. Now they rented Mrs. Pack's front room on West Temple Street. And it was kind of awkward though to house your state university in someone's front room, especially if they were eating dinner. So the Board of Regents picked a spot of land to the east, right where the cow was standing. Architect Richard Cletting drew up a swell building. It's the Coles Building. Oh, and there were some tough traditions back then that are now gone. Like what happened if you accidentally stepped on the university seal in the park building? We had Matt Day dances there on that marble floor. And of course, as a freshman, there, there was a little penalty, a little hazing if you walked on the seal of the university there. And he says the worst tradition then was that freshmen had to wear beanies all day long. Yep, 24-7. We had to wear little caps as freshmen so we could be identified as youngsters, you know. Now this allowed sophomores to exercise the tradition of finding freshmen and cutting off their hair. And not too good of a job of barbering back then. Now that's a tradition that stopped. University President Witzel left his office in the park building and went outside and threw a good fist into a haircutting sophomore's face and floored him. That ended that. Not a great tradition on either side. Now the university could prosper. There were classes in being a line man in newfangled electricity, model T repair, blacksmithing, among other swell courses. Then came other buildings, such as the park building with elegantly designed materials. And it would be the last time you could find a parking spot. There was no parking problem here on the circle. <laughs> If you'd have asked me what a parking lot was, I wouldn't have known what you'd talk about. But there was a campus, and campus life, it was a real college. Sixteen years ago, I interviewed one very good and kind student of the early 1930s. He went on to become one of the university's most beloved grads. Well, I had an ambition to become a journalist. Just think of that. President Hinckley also fondly remembered wonderful social outings at the U. I remember vividly the junior prom, which was held at the state capitol, another junior prom, which was held at the Hotel Utah. They were classy affairs and a lot of fun. Well, the university continued to grow and students continued to arrive. And the 1950s became the 60s and 70s. Not a great look in fashions, but a swell university. Oh yes, look at that freshman in 1970. Yeah, the guy on the right there, it's me. Just a very small part of a very big university. The school was built on knowledge, on commitment, and with one load of wood. Craig Worth, ABC4 News. Now you might be wondering what Craig teaches at the university. He says his students also wonder what he teaches at the U. However, we do have some of his former students working in our newsroom, so we can tell you he is helping build the future of broadcast journalism. Okay, let's take a look at our